to be with you in the mornings. If you have a Bible, go ahead and turn to the book of Exodus chapter 17. We'll look at verse 6 and also Numbers chapter 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The title of our message today would be From That Rock. When I lived in New York, I never saw a piñata. I certainly didn't see like a piñata ceremony. Piñatas are a ton, a ton, a ton of fun. Hey, you, you put them up high, you adjust them, the kids are blindfolded, they got to spin in a circle, they swing a baseball bat or a stick and they try and whap it and you start with the littlest kid. And even if they hit it, they can't break it to the next kid and the anticipation when someone whaps it, whaps it, then all the kids gather around. It actually looks... Super, super dangerous. I've never seen anybody gotten hit with that stick, but a dizzy kid swinging a stick and all the other kids anticipating when that pinata breaks all the candy that's going to be underneath it. Once it breaks, it's a madhouse. It's a frenzy. Everybody's diving for the candy, trying to hoard it up for themselves. In the Exodus journey, the people were thirsty. They didn't have any water for some time. And so the Lord told Moses to go up and find this massive rock and to strike the rock with his stick. And so he made a show of it. He was a little fed up with them anyway. And he struck the rock in this gallons, not, not even gallons. I mean, just tons in the barrel. I mean, just a torrent, just a massive river of water gushed from this rock so that millions of people and livestock could, could drink it. It was a mighty, incredible miracle that from a rock came the water. Well, later in Numbers chapter 20, we see, again, they're thirsty. There's no water in the wilderness. And the Lord tells Moses to go to a rock and speak to it. But instead of speaking to it in his frustration, he grabbed his rod and he said, Must I fetch water for you, rebels? And he struck the rock again and water burst out. But the Lord was not pleased. He said, You did not hollow me. You did not revere me in front of the people. You, you disobeyed me, Moses. I told you to speak to that rock and you wanted to strike the rock. Because of this, you will not be allowed to go into the promised land. That's the reason. Moses gave up being a prince to lead these slaves out of Egypt. For 40 years, he put up with their backbiting and rebellion. He could have just lived his life in the palace, but he gave all that up to, to lead them out of a slavery. And he doesn't even get to the promised land because this incident where in a moment of anger, a moment of rage, and by the way, a moment of anger, a moment of rage can cost you a lifetime of shame and condemnation and relationships. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we see uh, an insight into why, and it simply says, and that rock was Christ. This is a picture. You see, if we want renewals, we want revivals, we want that water flowing in the midst of the desert, flowing from a rock, we have to understand that Christ was struck. Christ is now spoken to, and Christ sends us the living water. I mean, what a blessing this living water is that, that it comes in. And Jesus is that rock that had to be struck for us on the cross in Isaiah chapter 53. It says, and God smote him. It's one thing if you slap me. It's one thing if we're sparring and, and my teammate punches me. But it's another thing if God strikes me, that the wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus Christ. And it says in First Peter chapter 2, that in his body, while on the cross, he took our sins. He died for sins. He was like that rock that had to be struck. In the book of John chapter 19, verse 34, we see Jesus hanging on the cross. His, his body is limp. There's no breath. There's no more heartbeat. And then that cruel Roman soldier takes that spike, takes that spear and plunges it into his side and through the rib and pierces that fiery cardiac sac around the heart and outflows blood and water. The rock was struck and, and water flowed out. The heart of Jesus was struck and water flowed out. You see, before we can have the living water, that renewal, that revival, Jesus had to pay the price and that rock was Christ. But the reason that Moses was prohibited from going in the promised land was because that he was supposed to now speak to that rock. We don't have to re-crucify Jesus. He died once and for all. What a great Savior. We don't have to put him back on the cross. Christ, uh, he died for our sins. The wrath of God has been appeased. He's a propitiation. God accepted him as an acceptable sacrifice. And never again does he have to be re-crucified. He's got the scars that are still there to prove that he did it. But now we can speak to him. You ever gotten a gift card? Isn't that wonderful? What a great gift that a gift card is. Somebody paid a $50 or a $100 and now you can go to Best Buy or you can go to Target or Walmart, wherever you want to go. And you get to pick what you would like because it's already paid for. 
You don't have to pull out your wallet. You don't have to pull out your credit card. It's already been paid for. Now you simply receive. And so it is with us, this new covenant that Christ has cut on the cross for us. You see, Jesus not only died for sins, but he rose from the dead. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and we know that this is the confidence that we have, that whatever we ask in his name, we know that we can receive. Again, in John chapter 14, verse 13, if you ask in my name, you will receive. You can speak to that rock that is now Christ. Sometimes I'll be in a store at the mall and one of my kids will want, hey, Dick, we go to the food court. And, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get some pizza. What do you, ah, oh, we want some, some Chinese food. Well, here, take my credit card. It's on my name, but you have my authority to go spend my money. So go ahead. You look like an Andrew Wallace Brett. Go ahead, take my card. And I don't think they've any, ever had any trouble where they say, oh, we, we need to see ID with that. Or, oh, you need to sign this, that. It, it's always gone through just fine. And, and so it is with God. Jesus died. He paid the price and now. We receive his righteousness. He took our filth and we get his purity. If we would ask things in his name, according to his will, according to it's his good pleasure, Luke chapter 12, to give us the kingdom. What a great thought. There are some that, that do rain dances. Uh, there's a drought and they say, hey, we got to get the shaman. We got to get the holy man. We got to get everybody together and we got to pound the earth. We got to plead to the deities that, that they would send us rain. We talked about Elijah and how he simply prayed, Lord, help these people to know I'm your servant. Send your rain. And, and then it did rain. I mean, it was so simple how he prayed. But Jesus sends us something special. He sends us the living water. If we would believe in him, then from our bellies, and we'll come to this next week, would flow the living water. That we can have that revival, that renewal in us, that that rock Christ, he, he's been struck and the water flows. He can be spoken to and the water flows. But now we have a joy and a passion. You ever look back in history at like the Chicago fire and you go, man, that destroyed acres and acres and thousands of buildings and less many people homeless. And, and you look at that time in the early 1900s, the Industrial Revolution, where there'd be a fire in the city of man just Blocks would be torched and hundreds would, would die and thousands would suffer. You go, man, I'm glad we don't have fires like that anymore. Well, of course we don't. We, we understand code better. We understand spacing better and our materials. Uh, we understand what, what, what burns better than they did back then. But also, we got water flowing underneath our buildings. We got sewer systems and we got uh, instant water in our sinks. We, there, there's always massive amounts of water flowing underneath our houses and, and in the streets. And with new modern technology, the firefighters, they, they can put more pressure or less pressure. They can put a fire out almost like that. And with new technology like cell phones, if, if you see a fire, you call and instantly they're coming. And now we got helicopters that can just drop mass amounts of water and put them out almost instantly i mean our firefighting technology has come a million miles from where it used to be because we understand the flow of fire and the flow of water here's the great promise that out of us would flow revival renewal rivers of living water where does it talk about these rivers of living water in, in the Old Testament? Perhaps it's here. Perhaps it's Exodus 17 when Moses strikes that rock and water flows. Perhaps it's Numbers chapter 20 when he, he's supposed to speak to the rock and water flows. And that rock was Christ. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you have sent your son Jesus to die on that cross in our stead for our full punishment. Lord, we thank you that we can simply now speak to that rock and, and that living water will flow from us. Give us that joy, that passion, that excitement. Lord, give us the living water. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.